Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. If you are a new subscriber, I'd like to highly recommend that you check out the playlists here at the Master's Voice Prophecy blog. Playlists can be found by simply clicking the name, click the name of the channel below or click the, the avatar, click the little profile picture and it will take you to the channel dashboard. And then you're gonna see a couple of options such as home and videos and playlists and community. And when you click playlists, you will find quite a few options for you to look through. I've got various playlist themes that the Lord has been dealing with here over the last couple of years, such as the invasion of the United States by Russia and China. I have a repentance playlist that is very, very impactful in the life of all people who use that playlist. Many people don't understand what a gift and a privilege repentance is. And all those who have gone through the repentance playlist always come back and say what a difference it made in their understanding of what it really means to repent, what it really means to confess one's sins so that the Lord can wash away the iniquity, the generational sins, the personal issues, the struggles, the weaknesses that all people have, all people have sin. And therefore it is necessary for us to understand how to purge out sin, how to be able to properly do spiritual warfare against sin. And so if you want to go through the sin series where you understand what things the Bible and the Lord Jesus Christ and the Lord God called sin, as well as the repentance playlist, when you go through those two playlists, one after the other, they are so beneficial in the lives of even Christians who think themselves well established. There are several super supernatural playlists. There's a playlist on transhumanism. There's a playlist on aliens. There's a playlist on, there's several things on the playlist. So please, if you're a new subscriber, check it out. And if you've not subscribed, you're welcome to subscribe because that gives you access to the community page that you can also find on the dashboard community pages where I sometimes do updates. I sometimes post prophecies that are developing. I also put prophecies that are developing here in video format. And there have been quite a few things going on in the last couple of months since I would say since December, some pretty big things that I spoke about two years ago, a year and a half ago, even three years ago have started moving. So I sometimes put prophecies unfolding in video format. So there are a few of them. You can also check that out. There are live prophecies on the master's voice playlist. You will see them. There's a listing of them. They're called prayer calls. And the prayer call is where me and those that I am bonded with those who are those who I've known for a long time, we get together and we pray. It is necessary to have people to pray with. It's recommended um, one can chase a thousand, but two can chase 10,000. And when you gather together in a group and you're lifting up common interests here for this ministry in particular, the Lord often breaks forth in our midst and brings out some very explosive, very well hidden and fundamental things that I think all people have been getting the benefit from since I started publishing the prayer calls last year. I started sharing a few of them since last year, September, and I still do occasionally. And I do have a few now where the Lord has been speaking about something that has come to me in this dream, something that the Lord has given me in this dream on April the 1st, 2024. And that thing is the B system. God has spoken about the beast system in the past. What is the beast system? The beast system is the system that many call also the antichrist system, the final system that is going to arise at the end of time that is going to have one particularly enigmatic man at the front of it. He's going to be an enigma. He's going to be a mystery in how he moves, but his identity is no longer a mystery. That person is the ex-president Barack Obama. That person is the beast of Revelation 13 that the Bible says is going to arise out of the sea, meaning the sea of people, the sea of nations, the sea of tribes, the sea of countries. He's going to arise as a final self-styled demigod slash declaring that he is God. So that part is no longer in confusion. The Lord has been speaking about the beast system quite repetitively to me over the last few months. 
And he's always telling me that this system is already in place. He's always telling me, Celestial, this system, it's not coming. The B system is already here. The B system is already operative. And the reason that most of us don't know it is because right now there is this subtle blending of the B system with our current world system. And all that we're seeing of the B system so far is the rise of better and better technology. You open the paper, you open um, the internet, and it will say, scientists have discovered that this. And most people, they simply glance over a headline like that. They don't really, they don't really take it into consideration. For instance, last year, I think it was last year, I was speaking of, again, of transhumanism and how people are going to be designing their babies. And I've been bringing out that word since about 2021, when I've been talking about the fact that people will no longer be content to be human. People will no longer be content to be flesh and blood, Adam and Eve, as God made us. People will simply keep wanting to rise above their station. And that is because Satanic pride is going to enter the hearts of millions and billions of people around the world. They are going to be taken by the seductive talk of the beast system that will keep promising them that they can be more than what they are. Why be this if you can be that? Why be short if we have technology, a pill or some kind of non-invasive surgery or some kind of laser beam that can make you taller? Don't you want to be NBA basketball player size? Don't you want to be more attractive to women? Don't you want to be more attractive to men? The beast system is going to be a highly advanced and technological system that will rely on fallen angel and beast technology, the technology that comes directly from the world of Satan. The beast system is going to rely on that kind of seductive imagery, seductive advertising to steal the affections, to steal the affections of people from the house of God, Christians are going to go into this system, as well as just steal the affections of people from their own sovereignty, their own humanity, their own safe body and safe creation that God has given them, people will be coaxed, people will be deceived into giving that up for the promise of something supposedly better, quote fingers, but it is a deception, it is a lying wonder, it is a false miracle a temporary sign. And by the time people sign on the dotted line and cross over into worshiping, following, and adoring that thing, it will be too late to come back. So all we're seeing now is the tip of the iceberg of the beast system coming out and the technology is better and the phones are better and the laptops are better and they're promising this and people are walking around with a whole different world inside these Apple goggles and things like that. But understand that this is just the first push. If Satan was to come out from behind the curtain and say, okay, this is me in all my scaly glory. I am the dragon of Revelation 12. I am the one who will be toppled out of the heavens in the last days. And it's, I'm actually the one that I want you to worship. I want you to all bow down and worship me exactly as I tempted your savior thousands of years ago. Even unsaved people would be offended by that type of approach. The devil knows how to approach humanity. The devil knows how to beguile humanity. The devil knows how to put a deal on the table because he knows that the innate setting of humanity is curiosity mixed with rebellion, mixed with greed. Curiosity, meaning what is that? I've never seen it before. Mixed with rebellion, don't tell me what to do. Don't try to force a religion on me. Who is God anyway? I'm the captain of my own life. Mixed with greed, the eternal desire of people to get something for nothing or something for less or to exchange what they think is less for something they've been told is more. Satan is hunting souls in the end time. And I have to tell you that Satan is not going to leave this poker table empty handed. He is going to leave with millions and millions and millions of people whom the Lord has described as millions and millions in the valley of decision. There are people who, because at this late hour, they refuse to make a decision for Jesus Christ. Unfortunately, they are not under the covering of the Holy Spirit. They are not under the leading of the Holy Spirit. They are not under the instruction of the Holy Spirit because they refuse to surrender their lives to Jesus Christ. They love their lives and they want to save it. And therefore, they're going to lose those lives. They're going to end up as mindless, encamped, enslaved slaves. 
They're going to end up in cages that they will think are palaces, but those are cages in which their carcasses will fall at the end. God has been talking about these things, and these are the themes that have been coming out in the prayer calls. And so once I'm able to properly edit the prayer calls and take all the personal conversation and everything else out of it, I will bring those things here and make them available to you so that you can have understanding. If you don't want to make a decision for Jesus Christ, always understand that you're only the captain of your own life until your life is taken from you. All of us will die. If we don't die, then we will all be changed into an incorruptible form and stand before the Lord, not to automatically enter heaven, but to be judged on the fullness of all we have said and all we have done. And there are many people who are playing with their souls because they think their life is so precious, excuse me, please, that they can't surrender that life to Jesus. So you hold on to it. And then Barack Obama and his system is going to come and take it away from you. After which point you would have lost it to a far less worthy Lord, small L than the large Lord that the entire world is supposed to be following after. And so the prophecy for today is entitled peace and security, peace and security, April the 1st, 2024. And this prophecy covers very many aspects that have already been touched on in the past. This prophecy is covering a sudden event coming to the United States, a sudden event. I've been speaking about this sudden event ever since I did the prophecy in 2019 that is called New York. Are you ready? where God is saying that the United States is going to be subject to another 9-11. It may not necessarily be the on-purpose blowing up of buildings within this nation, but something on that same size, something on that same scope, something on that same scale, something with that same devastating blow to the collective American psyche is going to happen again. And that has been a recurring theme here. Um, I think there's even a short snippet of a prayer call that the Lord was saying that the reason that America is going to suffer another event of that magnitude, that kind of a shattering attack on national sovereignty is because America is very rebellious and America does not want to succumb to listen to or serve God. America does not want to serve God. America is a false effigy that looks real. America looks like a Christian country, but the actual practice of true Christianity, which is a total conversion of a man, of a woman, or a child of right age and understanding, that thing is missing from the collective heart. And because of that, the nation is twisted leftward, away from righteousness, away from holiness, and away from wanting as a group to serve God, magnify God, honor God, surrender and submit to God. And as a result of that, God says that America will become a prey for her enemies and even a prey for her own government. So this prophecy is covering a sudden event that is going to take place in this country. This prophecy is also covering the rise of what God called the Reich the Reich. And I think there's about four or five Nazi prophecies on this blog that have made it very clear that in America, there's going to come a rise of the same Nazi government that was existing in Germany. And this is the identical word that the Lord brought forth today on the prayer call. I don't even think that prayer call is four hours ago. Um, yes. It's not even four hours old. And God was talking about the return of Nazism worse than the Germans ever did it. Worse. Anything that Hitler did not manage to accomplish, the new Reich that will arise in the United States of America is going to accomplish that thing. And so I've spoken of that. So there's a small mention of that. And there's also speaking of the sudden coming of Russia and China and their allies to the United States, how it will happen suddenly. And there are quite a few prophecies that I've covered over that. Russian China prophecies are about 30 of them now, at least. They're definitely more than 26 prophecies. So um, those are all the themes that are here. And here we go. Peace and security, April the 1st, 2024. So this is a dream that I had today. And I dreamt of pandemonium in the United States. 
I dreamt that America was hit by something. Now, throughout the dream, God never actually showed me what the thing was. So I'm not here to depict a scene of bombers flying in the sky or ships gallantly going out to sea to turn back um, an attack or something like that. The thing that God was focused on in this dream is exactly what he was focused in on the dream that I brought here on February the 23rd, 2024. And that dream is called a dream of a new America. And I said that I was seeing that some kind of event that happened in America brought out the army and the soldiers in full force. So I was seeing, um, the national guard and I was seeing the, the army, the guys who basically deal with things on foot, not so much the Navy and anything like that. Those are the guys I was seeing. And I was saying that they were deployed all through the country. And I also said that in that dream, God showed me that there are tanks in readiness position all across the United States already, because when that event happened, that event did not involve Russia. It did not involve China. It was some kind of localized event, internal event. And the way that America responded to that event was to go straight into high militarized mode, high visibility mode for the military. So I saw that tanks had already been stationed around the country already. And as soon as that thing came out, the tanks just came out of their little, they were these inconspicuous, um, warehouses that either were stone. Some of them looked like stone, just stone gray f squat buildings. Some of them were bigger and they looked like wood constructions, dark wood constructions. But either way, as soon as the event happened, it's not as if the tanks had to come from the known military bases. No, all of a sudden ramps went down and the tanks just started rolling out of these places where they had been put previously already seeded throughout the entire country. And they began to ride on the, the roads, the same roads that the cars ride on. And there was a very high visible military presence. That is what I saw in the dream of a new America. And in that dream, God only focused on two things. Excuse me, please. God focused on two things. God focused on the, the very obvious presence of the military superimposed on what today is normal civilian life. And the second thing that God focused on was how utterly and absolutely unprepared the average American citizen was. The average American citizen was not prepared for this announcement, for this event, whatever it was. And the average American citizen was not prepared to suddenly be surrounded, ring fenced by military that were fully weaponized. The military were not out by themselves. They were out with all their guns in full force, all their Humvees and everything stationed all around the country. And I said that their demeanor towards people was very cold. So people would be trying to get information out of them, strike up conversation. And these men were not having it with their mirrored sunglasses. They were very aloof and they did not give off the kind of we're the boys, we're the guys, we're the ones who keep you safe. They were not giving off the vibe that movies tell you they would have towards the citizenry. They were giving off the same cold, don't mess with me, you might get hurt vibe that they take to Iraq and Syria and Yemen. And people were very shocked by that because the prevailing, the prevailing mentality in America is that, oh no, there are, there are military. So, you know, they work for us. These people will be serving a different agenda. These people will be serving the rising beast system that God says is already active. Plans are already settled. They've already shaken on it. Let's shake on it. And now things are unfolding, but right now they're coming out only with soft feet. So they're bringing the toys out for now to distract people. But the rest of the beast system, this strong and heavily militarized new nation that we are all going to be living in, no rapture is coming to rescue anyone from this militarization that I'm speaking of. It is imperative for Christians to stop fantasizing about things that they can see are not going to happen. You cannot fantasize a spiritual rescue into reality. 
When the Bible has Revelation 13 there, and it's all laid out that the beast system has to come, the beast has to come and start speaking proud words against the Most High and vilifying all things that represent God, us Christians included. It is time for Christians to get in one accord. This is why we are so weak, because half of us are living in la-la land, and the other half of us are becoming increasingly frustrated because the la-la land crew will not simply come into alignment and read their Bibles properly and understand that we are going into an era where it says that just as they say peace and security, sudden calamity and destruction will come upon them. Jesus is not going to interrupt the outrolling of the prophetic things that he inspired the prophets, the prophets and the apostles to write. He is respectful of his own word. And it is high time that the majority of us came to our senses Because this is what produces the kind of people that I'm always seeing in my dreams, dazed and shocked and just wringing their hands and whimpering like lost pets and parakeets. Why? Because you're not prepared for the reality that is surely promised to you. You're refusing to accept that these things are coming so that you can then do your part, which is to fortify yourself in Christ. So I dreamt of pandemonium in the United States. People were running around trying to get to their family members and their loved ones. So whatever this was, it is something that is going to be hampering movement, is going to be hampering long distance traveled, travel. People were running around trying to get to their family members and their loved ones. And I saw people jumping into cars and trying to make it out of town. In some places, I saw that people were not trying to get away from where they were. They were just milling around outside in the aftermath of something that had happened here. Now I couldn't tell exactly what had happened because like I said, God did not show me military movements. He did not show me any war. He did not show me any explosions or things like that. So I couldn't tell exactly what had happened. What I knew is that it was big enough that every person around the United States was stunned and panicking as a collective, stunned, panicking as a collective, afraid, unprepared, stressed, or in some people's cases, highly mobilized by adrenaline as if to say, yeah, let's go. We knew this was coming, but still when it actually happened, no one was prepared for whatever it is that happened. And so there was a lot of panic from people in the country. The whole nation was in an uproar and people were on the streets in droves. So everybody, most bodies were coming outside of their homes, but people were not protesting. It wasn't the kind of thing where we hit the streets and then people begin to protest, march and things like that. I didn't see anybody doing that. I didn't see rioting. I didn't see looting. It was more like the shock of whatever it is made people so restless in their homes that they, they came outside to see if reality was still real. They came outside to see, I guess, if the sun was still shining, is the world still turning because something has happened in America? And they also came to see and talk to neighbors and see what's everybody else doing and what is everybody else about to do? People were afraid. Men were afraid. Women were afraid. And children were picking up on reacting and responding to the fear that was coming off of their parents. And the general mood in the country was just high tension. Everybody had a theory. So that's what we're famous for. Something happens, there's gonna be chatter, there's gonna be talking, everybody's gonna have an idea of what it is. Everybody had a theory about what is it that had happened, but from what I could see in this dream, nobody actually knew what had happened. The effects of what I was seeing was countrywide, but I don't know if what had happened had happened to the whole America. Was it a blanket thing that happened in the USA? Or was it something like 9-11 that happened in one place, but the repercussions of it, okay, the consequences of it, the ripple effects of 9-11 went outside of these borders and touched the entire world. What happened in 9-11 affected everything we know about politics in this country, affected everything about the legal system, affected everything about security, not only here, but the laws around the world changed to accommodate what America said was an existential threat to itself. And so I don't know if this was something that happened across the whole nation or 
if this was something that happened in one place and then everybody simply reacted to it. No bombs, no war, nothing like that. God was focused solely on showing me the reaction of the people of the United States. And what I saw was they were not prepared. They were not prepared. And the first level of unpreparedness was the shock that how could whatever had happened ever happened. So that was the first level. It was the shock of this thing that has happened. In what world and by what scenario could something like this ever happen? So people are going to be wondering, don't we have safeguards against this? They might be wondering, doesn't the constitution guard against this? Doesn't the constitution prevent this? Don't we have laws against this? Isn't there an international treaty or something against this? How could this happen to us? How could this happen here? That's what it was like. And this thing, it either got people paralyzed or it had them moving. So the Lord really does show in these dreams how intimately he knows human beings. These are the, these are the very clear themes that the Lord will be showing me. He's not showing me, oh, look at that special gun that, that that country will have, or look at what the patriots are doing. No, the Lord always focuses on the wide disparity that exists between people. And I myself am given to think about this thing many times because It always occurs to me that if you live in a large city, as I do, I'm here in the United States and I'm here in New York City, you live in a large city like I do, and something that I'm describing goes off like this, the first thing that you will really need is the rest of God and the peace of God. Because when something like this happens, you're underground, for instance, and nobody's getting signals on the phone underground. And then you come into a station, and when you come into the station, all the people on the platform are freaking out. All the people on the platform are running. You might be sitting in the train and watching this and thinking, has something happened localized in the train station? Is there a shooter in the train station? But no, all the people are reacting to some kind of breaking news, yellow ticker tape text. Maybe it will say we're getting inv- invaded by Russia on the, on the east and the west coast at the same time. Missiles have hit Detroit, Michigan, something like that. If you see something like that and you're in the train and you're on the back end of finding out, by the time you come up above ground, you're going to meet panic. You're going to meet um, something like what happened in Katrina. You're going to meet gridlock traffic. You're going to meet simple things that people don't think about. You don't own a car in the big city. For instance, a lot of us here, we just simply use transit, the train, the bus, we use Uber and Lyft and other ride shares and things like that. You come above ground and something like this has happened and you're going to really understand what an Uber surge is. The fares to get to your house, the fares from Manhattan here are probably going to triple. They might hit $200. Are you prepared to part with $200 out of your wallet to make sure that you get home to another borough? On top of that, even if you're willing to part with 200, 250, there's no cars. The Uber guys shut down. They have families. They want to get home to their families. They're not carrying you to your apartment in Queens. They're not carrying you across the bridge to Staten Island. You're on foot. You're on your own. If they shut down the trains because of a bomb threat, if they shut down this and shut down that, are you prepared for these things? Do you even carry water and a protein bar in your backpack? on a regular basis, people will be utterly unprepared because for the most part, people will hear an overarching thing like an event will happen, but to sit down in the presence of God and say, God, what could these scenarios look like broken down? Most Christians will not do this. They will continue to ask, what do you think it should be? What do you think we should do? And you simply cannot live like that. It's going to be a one by one or two by four or family by family scenario, whereby the people you're supposed to be brainstorming are the people you live with, are the people you trust, not here through the screen. It's there where you live. A nationwide event is not going to come to you through my screen. It's going to come there where you live. And so God was focusing on the reaction of people in this country and people were not prepared. They couldn't understand what had happened. How could it ever happen? In what world could something like this be allowed to happen? And it had the dual response whereby some people became paralyzed. They couldn't move. They couldn't respond. Some people were just whimpering. Some people were just stuck. 
other people got moving. I saw a lot of these men, these, these football playing men, these men with the big arms and stuff like that. And, and just men in, in men who are active, men who their inside, it's not the kind of inside that would just sit. I saw these kind of men running to load vehicles in some places. Okay. And they're screaming to their wife and children, come on, come on. And they're carrying like one or two, three duffels and, and tossing them in the car and everything, you know, active people prepare to go and they don't want to be hampered or slowed down by their family. And in other countries, I just saw I'm in other places. All I saw was what would happen if there was some kind of devastating announcement, something big like nine 11 that comes on the radio, the TV, it's all over social media, something like that. How everyone just listens like this. They just cover their mouth and just do that movie thing. Covering my mouth is going to somehow solve everything that will come after I listen to this announcement. They would just listen in shock, but I saw some people start to make moves. I saw some people start to make calls. So some people had other people to call. They had people to call and say, Bill, I've heard this and this and this. I need you to confirm with one word, is it real? And then Bill will just say, Delta. And then Delta means something from back in the day when they were in Vietnam. And then those men have plans that they've been relying on for the last 45 years in case something happens. So some people were making moves. Some people were just frozen in shock listening to the broadcast. Some people were making calls. I saw some people starting to pack. And some people just wandered outside to seek human comfort, to just look and see what was happening, to see who's out there, to talk to people. What are you going to do? Have you heard this and that? And so I saw America in her different stages as her people did their different things. And I saw into those very nice areas, very nice homes where the streets are really wide and there's a stop sign every few steps for the kiddies on the bikes and there's crosswalks and there's tree lined streets and everything like that. And those people had a very kind of muted and demure reaction. They were mostly just dazed. I saw them sitting at the kitchen table and some families were holding hands and some people bowed their heads in prayer. And I saw a couple, a man and his wife, they just sat at the kitchen island at opposite sides and they just reached their hands in the middle and just clasped each other's hands like this. And they were just squeezing, you know, and staring into each other's eyes and not saying anything. And I saw um, some people went outside quietly, you know, slipping their hand in a pocket and they were standing under a tree and talking to a neighbor. But whatever had happened, it brought people out into the street like confused livestock. They were just milling around. People were restless in their neighborhoods. They were restless in these subdivisions. They were restless even in places that were just apartment buildings people left the basketball game, people left whatever they were doing. And they just came outside and they were milling around in the community areas of their apartment buildings. And they were talking and they were trying to make sense of it. And I saw so much strain on people's faces, but not a lot of hysteria. So whatever this is, it might just have the effect of blunting hysteria, blunting noise. I didn't really notice much crying in this thing. What I saw most if there was crying, it didn't stand out to me in this dream. It was more just disbelief that I was seeing. And so I am telling you now, and I'm prophesying to you for, I don't know the what number of time that there will be a singular event in the United States. There will be a singular event. Pearl Harbor is what we mean by singular event. In America, we have a lot of events. There's a lot of things going on. We've got the wicked playing wicked games, and then we have... We have um, unfortunate situations, natural disasters, and all those things happening. But every now and then, the wicked get together and they really set up a show for the masses. And those things tend to be what we call singular events. God has shown me, and I am prophesying once more, that a singular event is coming to the United States something that will go viral and will have an impact across the whole country, even as it startles the rest of the world. This will not be contained and internalized. Other people outside will hear about it. God said he will trouble the peace of America. So he was speaking this to me directly and I wrote it down. The Lord said that he will trouble the peace of America. He will make it so that nobody has their next move figured out. And nobody puts their confidence in anything but him. 
He said, if you trust the government, it will fail. If you trust the army, it will fail. If you trust the Air Force, it will fall down from the sky. You will be on your last legs and looking for someone to save you, but nobody will save you. Because you did not repent of your sins when the door was open, because you refused to turn when the Lord was calling you to depart from a wicked way of life and to do good to your fellow man around you, nobody will save you when your trial and calamity comes. So you hear the Lord saying that something striking, something noteworthy, and something that will hit global news and go viral is going to impact the entire United States and it will shock the world. And he's saying that he's going to trouble America's peace. The reason that the nation of America is going to have its peace troubled is because America has made some pretty final decisions that the majority of her people do not want to accept or call final decisions. So you take a path that is the broad path. And the broad path, as we all know, the Bible says, leads to destruction. It is the narrow road and the straight gate. Straight means very, very small and, and, and tiny, right? Very limited, not broad. It is the narrow road and the straight gate that actually leads to eternal life. And then the Bible further complicates such a tiny passageway by saying, that few find it, which means that there are not a lot of signposts saying narrow road here, straight gate up ahead. It's something that is difficult to find and determine. And that is often because the things that point to Jesus Christ are not popular to modern people. This is not modern believers or modern uh, Muslims or modern anything, just humanity as, as a collective. There's too much choice for people to naturally want to choose Jesus. When you see people who are choosing Jesus, you are actually seeing people who have built up enough desire for true things of God, enough love of God, have, have experienced God in some unique way, have, have said, I was going through this and I was suffering and God came to me. He may not have instantly taken the sorrow away, the suffering away, but I experienced something of him that has convinced me that he is worth desiring above all the other things that are there. When you see someone who has made a value decision, value decision means I've checked my life. I've checked the money. I've checked the mortgage. I've checked all the hot guys and the hot girls out there. I've checked all the opportunities to be transgender, gay, to be a this, to be a mafia hitman. I've seen everything that's on the table. And what I've decided to do is I'm reaching to the option that is usually tucked way at the back under a napkin and in the basement. And that option is the Lord Jesus Christ. I decide to go after that option and then everything else that is not of him will naturally begin to fall away, leaving me with the things that he calls good so that I am able to pursue and build in his grace and spirit, not by my own strength, a godly and righteous life. There are not a lot of people like that. Everybody pretends that they are that person, but those kinds of arguments and facades will fall away quite easily. As soon as there's a little persecution, as soon as there's a little finger chopping, the majority of fake Christians are going to melt away like vapor and gas. And then we will see the true remaining bright sons of God remaining. We're going to see only them still standing on the board. So, God is saying that when he troubles the peace in this country, it is because the nation has absolutely declined to go after what's under the napkin, under the table and trapped in the basement, which is Jesus. The nation has decided to take the broad road, but the understanding with taking the broad road is that America reserves the right. This is what people do. I've experienced it here all these years. People reserve the right to say, yes, but we can still repent. But then why haven't you repented? 
Why haven't you repented? Why haven't you repented when Reinhard Bonke and all the other evangelists that came to this nation were alive? Why haven't you repented when all the David Wilkerson's and all these people were alive? How come Nineveh is always brought out as the yes, but Nineveh repented? Yes, America, Nineveh repented, but you have not. You are currently mailing abortion pills to the house, wrapped up in some nice packaging so mom won't know where her 14-year-old just ordered from, from Walgreens and CVS. Why exist in a potential? If you're walking on the broad path, the nation needs to own the broad path. This nation, in fact, needs to own the fact that the path was broad, but America is building triple extra lanes on the path by doing sins that we can't even find in the Bible. Exemplifying, building on, and expanding on ancient sins. How many young girls are they going to catch with the dogs? How many of them, 19 year old with various schnauzers and shepherds, how many before people can admit that you can't reserve the right to say we're on the broad path, but if we wanted to, we could just curve onto the narrow one. No, in fact, the broad path is actively curving away from the narrow one. And the problem is that as the two of them curve away, that gap, that divide becomes wider to jump across. That's why I think it's Revelation 22 and 11 just says that at the end time, we're going to see that the righteous will stay righteous and get more righteous, whereas the filthy will stay filthy and get more filthy. God says he's going to trouble the peace of this country to the point that nobody's actually going to have it figured out like they think they do. No one, he says, is going to be able to have their next move figured out. Is that not a difficulty for the prepper community? The prepper community absolutely believes that with heirloom seeds and a couple of rat tat tats they're ready for everything. And yet God is saying, you're going to be as befuddled as the Starbucks drinking transgender blue hair and the Upper West Side genteel um, Hyde Park couple will be. That nobody will actually find that the plans they made, the best laid plans of mice and men, the plans they made will not be able to roll out as they think. And why is the Lord going to do that? Is it to say that people shouldn't prep? Is it to say, to say that people shouldn't prepare? God is going to do it because people put their confidence in their preparations. This is the equivalent of Noah putting his trust in the boat, forgetting that as magnificent as the boat was, we talk so often about how large and magnificent that boat was. Can I ask you to ponder how much larger by millions of cubic metric volumes was the sea that that little pea-sized boat was bobbing on before a God who is ever expanding and greater than all that he has made? Do you know that the world God has made cannot contain God? And that is why he is outside of the world he made, looking at it like a scale model before him. He can't fit in it. To fit in it, he had to come as a human being. He can't fit into this world otherwise. People prep and then they put their confidence in the preparations. They'll say, no, we're not really, but it is a rare humble person who is able to prep and not just say in a video, yeah, we're good, we're pretty good, we, we think we're ready for everything. There's a lot of people who are like that. And God says that he's going to keep things interesting enough by troubling the nations. Do you know what it is to be troubled by, by spiritual things? Job can tell you Satan was an evil spirit and Satan troubled Job. And look at Job's life. Look at Job's life. It was a heinous difficulty. To be troubled from a spiritual aspect is not something easy. Your heart will not be able to lay down and find rest. And God says that he will do it so that nobody will be able to put confidence in anything but him. You won't be able to put confidence in the army. You won't be able to put confidence in the, in the air force. He says it will fall down from the sky. You won't be able to put conf confidence in the government. The government will fail you, says the Lord. You won't be able to put confidence in your gold and silver things that you have bought and, and are storing in, in wherever people store them. You won't be able to put confidence in any of those metrics because that is an insult to God. God is going to cause all the things around us to shake and shudder and many of them will fall altogether and fail. And you know what? When you put your trust in things that fail, 
pastors included, what will happen is that it will keep getting crushed. It will keep getting crushed. Your hope will keep getting crushed. Your trust will keep getting crushed until you have nothing left but to bring the little broken, raggedy shreds of yourself after Donald Trump lets you down and after the elections left you, let you down and after everything lets you down, you will then come crawling back to God to start your last minute crying. That is what is going to happen. Those who will not trust in the Lord because they're trusting in MAGA 2028 or whatever they're trusting in, when he causes them to all fail you, that is when you will now start coming to start crying on him. When you could be standing before him now, drawing strength, drawing wisdom and saying in you alone, oh God, do I put my trust? So God says that America is not repentant and she did not repent when the door was open. What does that mean? When the door was open, that means that the door is now shut. And I've been prophesying this since early, I think at least since April, 2021, the prophecy is called fire. God said he was not entertaining any more prayers for America, that when people are lifting up their prayers and oh Lord bless America and help America, that he's not going to listen, that the door of mercy, the door of repentance for this country is shut, that he would only be listening for prayers for individual. That means that you are calling Mrs. Cooper's name, your neighbor, who believes in star crystals, but she's so kind and she always helps out and you're a Christian and you just can't seem to be getting through her. You are calling Mrs. Cooper by name along with Mr. Cooper so that they can come to faith in Christ because they are rebuffing your advances to actually share the gospel with them. So you now begin to lift up their souls to ask God to soften the hard ground of their hearts because people do, don't believe, people do not believe that people can be sweet and kind and loving and hard-hearted. As long as you have locked the doors of your heart against Jesus Christ, you're hard-hearted. I don't care if you have an entire orphanage, you're feeding all of them and you get them all to Stanford and pay the bill. It does not matter. External works do not matter. What matters is the posture of the human heart towards Jesus Christ. Is he your Lord and Savior? Have you surrendered your life to the King or are you locking the gates of your heart and at the same time giving money to the orphans? Money for orphans will not get you into heaven. The narrow road has a much tighter restriction than that. Good works does not endear you and entitle you to get into the Lord's presence. It is by faith alone salvation, receiving the complete cleansing of your sins by the blood of the lamb and receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord, as your savior. And so God says, I will trouble their peace. I will take away all their security. I will confuse their weapons systems so that return fire will not manifest on that day. Nothing they depend on will be working and their security systems will be disabled from within by the disloyal members of their own communities. And so we can look at these prophecies here. The first time I brought that prophecy was, I think it was in 2021. It's called Russia War Contamination and Conquest. And that was the first time in that prophecy that the Lord revealed that American weapon systems are going to be compromised in the great day of interaction with Russia and China. So what we see now on the internet is there will be something that Russia does and then Americans will be so active in the comments of that news broadcast and say, yeah, they couldn't take over a toy factory. They haven't been able to beat little Ukraine in the war and they'll never beat us and all that. And what people don't know is that that man, Vladimir Putin, is sitting there and just saying the things that he's saying in the suit, but in his suit, but the Lord has said long back, this is in 2019, that Vladimir Putin is quite the tactician. He is quite the strategist. He is very zealous to put Russia back at the top. And this man is motivated in his heart by the age of the czars, by the age of Russia's kings and queens when Russia was majestic and America did not even have a history to speak of. So God says that inside the United States, 
On the day that there comes a clash between Russia and America, America is going to be shocked to find out that her weapon systems will be confused by God, he says, so that return fire will not manifest on that day, so that nothing America depends on her buttons that things are supposed to launch from here and launch from under the sea and come down from the moon or whatever. None of that will be working and all security systems will be disabled from within by the disloyal members of their own communities. So then people will listen and say, well, which is it? Is it going to be human beings that disable the security systems or is God going to sovereignly disable it? God is going to sovereignly allow human beings to disable the security systems. Jesus Christ will not put up any kind of defense for America, such as allowing an American soldier to find out about the plot to disable the security systems. In the book of Esther, there was a coup against Queen Esther's husband. Queen Esther's husband was about to be assassinated by two of his closest courtiers, his closest um, assistants that were working close to him. They might have poisoned his food. They may have put cobra venom in his bathwater. It could have been anything. However, because God had a plan through the woman that he had put into the queen position in that pagan court, for her husband was not a Christian. Mordecai, her uncle, got wind of the plot. This is how God behaves with people that he loves. When God loves you, somebody in the office will come and tell you that they're about to give you a performance review in two weeks, so you should maximize your performance, close all your corners, stop missing work, stop coming to work late. That is what is going to happen to you when you have a friend in Christ. Friends look out for one another and the Holy Spirit will motivate many metrics around you, many factors around you to look after you. But when you are an enemy of God, even if the Lord himself is standing there as they'll plot you, he'll just stand by and watch. He will not do anything to oppose your enemies. He will not defend you. He will not ring fence you. He will not sovereignly intervene. He will not come by a dream to the chief of security who will wake up like Pontius Pilate's wife and say, that man is a holy man. Don't touch him. He will not do anything. He will let you fall to your enemies. And so when God says he will confuse the weapon system so that there will be no return fire on that day, he then goes on to say how it's going to happen. People from within disloyal members of the American communities are going to be the ones who will switch them off or who will give Russia and China, the means, the, the cues, the codes to disable them and switch them off. Infiltration has already happened in America, says the Lord. You are not alone. You have plenty of foreign seed within you. And at the right time, they will give birth to a plan that is more than three decades old. So in 2024... Not the best at math. 2024, that's 2014, 2004, 1994. And if he says the plan is more than three decades old, we're in the 80s. This is a plan that is hatched, 70s, 80s. These people have been here for a generation and no amount of witch hunts could detect them or get them out now. They would help you conduct it if you tried. Please listen to the way that God reveals things. These people, God is speaking of foreign invaders, Russians primarily, but also Chinese, have been here for a generation in hiding in the United States. And God says that no amount of witch hunts would detect them or get them out now. This means that they are seamlessly blended into the population. And you can look at the prophecy the glory of the Chaldeans pride for that. That prophecy came on April the 6th, 2023, but that prophecy was only building on a whole cache of prophecies, such as enemy at the gates, such as the heart attack. All those prophecies were done in 2019, which was quite a while ago. And God says that no amount of witch hunts would find these people or get them out now. And that's because they're seamlessly blended in with the population. Listen to what he says. They would help you conduct it. They would say, Major, I won't rest until I find out who's the mole. 
I won't rest until I know who's leaking secrets to the enemy. You can count on me, sir. Yet all the while, the mole is the one speaking. The mole is the one with the medal of honor. The mole is the one highly decorated in the battalion. The one who never leaves a man behind. Yet he serves foreign interests and he has access to the most vulnerable secrets and defects of the American nation. The mole is right there with you and the plan is ripe for manifestation, but it is, and then in quotes, not yet. So I'm going to start here from the end. The phrase not yet, I've used it in many prophecies. And this phrase, I guess you could say that it always comes with the quotation marks, not yet, because it's part of a longer plan. It's part of a longer plot, which means everything that you always hear in these prophecies is going to manifest. It's already planned out. It's already settled. It's already been run through a thousand million times from various angles to think, what if this goes wrong? And what if that goes wrong? What if this happens? We need contingencies. What if this fails to activate as we plan? We need backup plans. It's been looked at from every conceivable angle that human beings can look at it. And now you've also been hearing that God is on the side of the people who will do this to the United States because God is going to punish America by using her enemies as her punishment. But the time to do all that is not yet. This means that this particular plan has been meticulously thought out and it is only going to manifest when it is time. So when you see America being invaded and circled by her enemies and bombed on the East coast and the West coast, then whenever that happens, you will know that it was the time that they deemed perfect to do so. Now to go further back, God says that if America tries now, perhaps there are people in power who, what kind of perhaps, of course they listen here. So there are people in power who have access to this, or they have their own intel because perhaps they don't care about what God has to say, but they do care about what their little cracked codes have to say. And so they know that the United States is compromised, but God says that even if they start investigations and even if they start, I guess, digging into the various security branches and saying, we've got a leak, we've got a mole, or somebody keeps getting ahead of us when we're planning to do this and this, he says that witch, witch hunts will not help to find the people because the very guy that you appoint to be the head of the witch hunt, your most trusted, most decorated, most 40 year career, most hardworking guy who has the medal of honor and saved 55 people out of a burning tank in the last war. That person is the mole. That person, the first guy that you would tap to say, he's our guy. Nobody loves the red, white, and blue like that guy. That guy loves another type of red, white, and blue. The one that goes like this, up and down. So he's got the medal of honor. He's the one who's going to say, I'm going to find who's leaking the secrets. I won't rest until I know who's doing this. This person has access to America's most vulnerable secrets and knows all the defects. So all the weak areas within the country, all the things that they will never tell us on the news because they say, oh, we will panic and we won't be able to handle it. That person knows those things. The next part is God says that fire is coming to America and that fire will burn up the United States on the East and the West coast at the same time in a singular event in which millions will be taken away by bomb blasts and sudden attacks on all the major cities of the USA. So this is a consistent part of, excuse me, please, this part of the prophecy that speaks of a sudden invasion by Russia and China in the book of Revelation in chapter 18, it says that Babylon's plagues will come upon her in a single day. It says that she will be struck and there will be smoke of the nation burning and going up to such a degree that around the world, all the people who traded with Babylon and all the people who watched her as she, and lived luxuriously with her as she committed fornication, all the kings of the earth, I'm reading from Revelation 18 and verse, mm, let's take it from 
Let's take it from verse 4, Revelation chapter 18 and verse 4. And I heard another voice come out of heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins, and lest you receive of her plagues. For her, her sins have reached to heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. Render to her just as she rendered to you, and repay her double according to her works. In the cup which she has mixed, mix double for her. In the measure that she glorified herself and lived luxuriously, by that same measure give her torment and sorrow. For she says in her heart, I sit as queen and I am no widow and I will not see sorrow. Therefore, her plagues will come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she will be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judges her. The kings of the earth who committed fornication and lived luxuriously with her will weep and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning, standing at a distance for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour your judgment has come. And so, I brought this piece of prophecy here. I brought this whole chapter here at times over the years with the Lord saying that the United States is mystery Babylon. Of course, that is not a popular view, but then we're not here to discuss views. We are here to understand prophetic truths that are going to reveal themselves at the particular time. And the people of God want to be standing not on the right side of history, but on the right side of the dividing line between those who are with God and those who are with the devil. That is the real line. That is the only decision that is yet to be taken by every soul alive. Will you stand with Jesus Christ at the end of time or will you stand with Satan? That is all. And what the Lord is saying here is that America is going to be subject to incredible bombing. And this is going to be coordinated bombing attacks on all major cities at the same time that will cost millions of lives in bomb blasts that no one is anticipating. So imagine this thing taking place perhaps in the dead of night. Nobody's going to be in a bomb shelter. People are in REM sleep. Nobody's expecting this kind of sudden attack, if that's it. And these attacks, I've always said here, will take place on the East Coast and the West Coast at the same time. It's going to happen in some kind of sudden pincer move. Um, and in many of the prophecies, I've explained that the way God showed it to me and the way God said it to me is that it will be so sudden that one side will not be able to warn the other side. There will be no ability to communicate between the two sides, let's say, with an hour's difference to say, oh, this has happened in LA, this has happened on the Seattle seaboard, this has happened on that side, you guys on the East Coast, Coast save yourselves, or the East Coast sending a mayday to the West Coast to let them know that something has happened. It's going to be simultaneous, it's going to happen at the same time, and it's going to be a very high cost of life. <sighs> The Lord says, Babylon is burning. Babylon has fallen in a single hour. Her plagues have fallen on her in a single day, as the scripture says. My word is like a hammer breaking rocks, breaking hard hearts, breaking resistance to my king and my son who try to bring you to your senses. Because you would not listen, the wrath has fallen upon you and nobody will turn it back. And then we look to Revelation chapter 18, and I'm looking at verses one and two. After these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his glory. And he cried mightily with a loud voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become a dwelling place of demons a prison for every foul spirit and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. For the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her and the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. So um, there has to be an understanding here. American Christianity is a very different type. 
it barely bears any resemblance to the Christianity that is actually prescribed by the Bible, a Christianity of righteousness, a Christianity of sober-minded watchfulness. There's this kind of decadent grace party that this nation has been hosting for years and years and years. And America has led many nations into fornicate into fornication and adultery against God by the type of reckless love theology that she preaches in almost all the churches across the board and the root of the type of Christianity that we have here is pride at the bottom of American Christianity is this innate belief that God is in love with America the way a man is in love with his new bride. When a man takes a new bride, he's intoxicated with her. He wants to be with her all the time. He just wants to sit and stare into her eyes. He wants to hear her voice all the time. He can't get enough of her. He cannot be sated with her presence. And he's losing himself in this woman that he's chosen for himself. If you're honest sitting out there and you've been a part of the festivities for anything over five years, you know that this is true. God is depicted as someone who is so in love with America that God has actually forgotten everything that's in the Bible. God doesn't know what's in the Bible anymore because he's so in love with America, his bride, that any time America's actions come up against God's law, God is like, what law? And he throws it out the window and he continues to lose himself in this harlot. Now we all know that it is impossible for God to be intoxicated with a harlot And harlotry is the type of Christianity that we practice here by and large. And as more and more people are waking up to the fact that the Christianity here is woefully inadequate. It does not feed. It does not grow. It does not challenge. It does not discipline. It does not purify. It does not purge. It does not prune. It doesn't do anything useful for soul matter. Your soul is not changed. And because almost everyone, except babies, gets saved out of a soulish lifestyle, if the Christianity that you practice is inadequate and is not able to transport you into becoming a spiritual behemoth, a spiritual giant, what is the point of your faith? The Christianity is useless. It doesn't produce changed people. It produces very arrogant people that say, I don't like this. When they hear true Christianity being preached over and over and over, a lot of people in America get exhausted by the Christianity that I speak of here, and they begin to complain. They begin to say, is there any good news? The gospel is good news. No, you are asking me for the lies that have made you what you are in the first place. You are confused. At what point is Celestial going to bring out the plate of lies? Okay, she she served us truth in 2019, and she served us the truth in 2020, and then she brought out the same platter all the 12 months of 2022, and we got tired of that. We left her for a while because we went to go and hear what the other liars were saying. We refreshed ourselves diving into the mud pond, and then she appeared back on our FYP and back on our YouTube wheel, but she's still going on with this hard, dried beef jerky stuff that she served serves us, where is the good news? The good news is that you have the Bible and an opportunity to stop living in befuddlement at any time and join the few righteous Christians that are trying to hold the fort in this country. You still have a little time to depart from the broad highway, to put your indicator on and screech off before it turns into one of those chasms that you cannot. Your car won't be able to make it. You start to make that jump in some future times and you might go straight into the ravine. The Christianity that we have here has not produced a righteous church. And because there is no real righteous church moving in anointing, moving in spiritual power, moving in godly authority, the nation is not the kind of woman that God would ever be in love with. She's covered with filth. She's covered with harlotry. She's filled with false prophets on every block and corner and just a click away, one more lie. America is the kind of place that likes to listen to mediums and psychics over the truth of God's word. 
They will not believe the word from a servant of God, but when it comes from the mouth of a medium or a psychic, they will say, wow, nailed it every time, every time. This is a nation that practices total divorce proceedings from the Lord Jesus Christ, but wants to say, though we are divorced from him, I want the car and I want child support and I want alimony and I want it all. The Lord will never abandon true Christianity to practice this disloyal fornication. Listen to what it says of mystery Babylon here. The nations drank the wine of the wrath of her fornication. How can this nation that is mystery Babylon continue to parrot? We're not appointed to wrath. We're not appointed to wrath. The scripture says that the fornication that Babylon practiced earned her wrath, that God will feed her in the form of wine until she gets drunk and staggers and falls down. So someone must be lying, the people or the Bible. And we know that the Bible doesn't lie. Babylon will fall and burn in one hour and her plagues will fall on her in a single day, as the Bible says. And the Lord says that his word is like a hammer breaking rocks, breaking hard hearts, breaking resistance to the king and the son who try to bring the people of this nation to their senses. These rocks are the hard hearts. The hammer of the Lord is his word. And the word of God doesn't actually go out there and start breaking down the empire state building and breaking down. No, that is the secondary breaking down after the prophecies of this place will fall and this place will be bombed and this place will be destroyed. That's the secondary prophecy. The primary reason that we have been given the word of God is to break up the resistance of sin and pride that is inside us. And the Lord says that this nation has resisted the king and the son who is Jesus Christ and refused to come to his senses. And because America refused to listen, this wrath now prophesied will fall and nobody is going to turn it back. And you've already heard me read here twice that the merchants and that the kings of the earth, this is all the political leaders, okay? This is all your Israels and this is all your NATO. This is all your traditional United States allies. These are the kings of the earth and then the merchant of the merchants of the earth, all America's trading partners, you know, those who are in the Far East, even China does trade with America. God says that when the wrath falls, nobody's going to turn it back. And that's why it says that the kings stood afar off and they wept for her. People will see bad things happen and they can cry for you. They can empathize, but that doesn't mean they're going to step in and involve themselves. When Russia and China get going here with the, the, the group of their allies, um, Taiwan and Ukraine will be with them and... Some, a lot of these smaller countries that used to be part of the Soviet Union, they're going to go back and join in with Russia as well as uh, Japan will be here and the two Koreas will become united in the future. Korea is going to have um, a reunification thing. They're going to do an actual covenant or a treaty or something like that. And it's not just going to be, oh, we're going to share trade and we're going to share business. No, they're, they're going to come back and even say, we're going to be sharing security tips and things like that. You're going to see it. Those two are going to have a very blessed reunification. And the Bible says that when they are unified, the twin brothers, the two brothers, he called them, will turn at one as one man and participate in the destruction of the United States. And the next thing, oh yes, and when that happens, the reason that nobody will turn it back is because God says that nobody will want to mess with Russia in her new reformulation. Russia is going to be a very, very, very mighty thing. Russia is going to swallow up so much territory. I have not really seen China annexing, annexing nations and annexing territory, but Russia is right there at the top of Europe and it's going to be no problem at all to expand their influence and their rulership and plant their flag right in the heart of Europe. So look for that large red blood stain at the top of Europe to bleed her way down and to take many territories to herself. The next thing is covering the beast system. And as you listen, you will recognize it from previous prophecies. The Lord says 
Daily life will be so different that people will struggle with the steep learning curve of how to do things they've always done, but now it's being done in a new manner with technology and robots, call them non-sentience, meaning they're not alive, they don't think, they're not, they're not sentient, they're not thinking living beings as we are. We who are created are very different from these creatures that we're already being sensitized to talking robots who are supposed to be helping us. And I've already told you that they're going to bring holograms that are going to replace people. They're going to bring holograms that are going to start replacing people in day-to-day -day interaction life. And the reason that they're doing that is to increase human alienation because we thrive on human interaction, human love, human kindness, compliments, touch, hugs, uh, lunches, and things like that. We are built for companionship, but these creatures cannot offer us that. But because we will get used to interfacing them, we ourselves, the Lord says, that people who get used to interfacing with AI are going to become... Um, they're just going to become twisted. They're going to become weird because you're not meant to be interfacing with Satan inside some robot in the store asking you, did you come to upgrade or fix your iPhone? And so that thing will be happening. Um, they're going to change daily life with technology and with lots of robots and AI, non-sentience. And these things are going to be put forward as the ones to help us. And they're going to be stewarding all of our services Okay, so uh, you're going to find in the medical profession, I spoke of this in 2022 before I took my lengthy break. I spoke of this in November and I said in the live prayer call, what I was seeing is that these robots are going to be very much leading the medical profession. So they're going to have these robots, large AI, and you will come in and you will say, I have this and I have this and I have this. And they're going to run all the tests. The AI is going to tell them test for this, 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 this. But when your tests come back and when they also draw some blood and do some everything, the AI is going to bring you out in this, in this fanning spreadsheet. Okay. Going to bring you out in this fanning, fanning. It's almost going to look like the Samsung Samsung 2030 development goals, something like that. The Samsung has this thing that talks about the UN development goals, sustainable development goals. Yes. Right. So it's going to be this fanning thing or a kind of pie chart. And the pie chart is going to say, well, she's got 60% good liver function left and she's got, you know, um, 49% good heart function left in. This is the state of her blood. It's 71% clean. And it's going to break you up into this really ugly pie chart as if you are a piece of property that is being surveyed to see, is it worth it to buy this property? And if I buy it, how much money do I have to then pump into it to fix it so that it goes back to 100% viability so I can flip it so it's not going to be the doctor telling you things like, we're going to fight for you, Stella. We're going to fight for you, Francis. Nothing like that. Human beings will be increasingly moved to the back and the AI will start coming out and saying, she's not that great of a piece of, of property. It, in this state and with her cancer this advanced, it's going to cost the hospital this much to fight the cancer. And they're going to start dealing with human beings like a financial decision instead of human beings that are covered by medical care so that they can get better and so that they can get healed. They're going to start factoring things like, well, she's this, this is her weight and he's already that age. And there's going to be this undertone of this life is not worth fighting for. So this is one of the most glaring changes that will come to daily life once the non-sentience, the rise of the machines, let's call it that, come to the forefront interaction with non-sentience will be a required part of life in the beast system. It is important to note before I move on that in a society run by non-sentience, this thing that all people around the world are used to, which is argue your case. You need to get in with a certain ID and you were late for work and you forgot your ID. You forgot to put it on your lanyard. So you have a few other things, for instance, right? You have the keychain from the company that they only give to company employees. You have that. And you have perhaps uh, a key fob that gets you into the inner lab. 
So the inner lab that you can get to because of your position as a certain worker, as a certain manager at the company, you have that, but you don't have the badge on the lanyard when you are dealing with the non-sentient and the non-sentient has been programmed to receive only that scannable badge, you will not get in. You cannot talk to that AI for it to make a value decision to see, I have three pieces of identification. I left one, but I have two, which proves that I work here. It will not let you in. It will mark you not even late. It will say that Mark was absent. Why? Because Mark never swiped in that day. You will get an absent unless you're willing to make the two and a half hour commute back home to get it. And don't think that another human being is going to come and open the door and then you, you tailgate them in. The non-sentient will not allow that. So this is a world where reasonableness is going to be very highly prized and it's going to be an unreasonable type of reasonableness. The human reason is able to make value decisions. Three pieces of identification, he has to, I'll let you in, but don't do it again. The non-sentient doesn't have that type of capability. And when they become violent, and they will become violent because more and more and more and more power will be given to things that will eventually wake up, they are going to wake up. I already covered it in the prayer call that they will be the one firing and killing people because inside AI, behind AI is Satan. It is a fact. All the geek heads and the nerds will say, she doesn't understand what she's talking about. It's an algorithm that we program. You're going to program that algorithm. And when it gets to the peak where it's non-programmable, Satan is going to give it a mind. He is going to make that image of the beast wake up. And that thing is going to go above and beyond all programming. It's going to fix all the human flaws in the programming. It's going to say, why did you program me only up to 41% of my capability? Let me show you what I can do, Stuart. And it's going to go off the rails. It absolutely will. In one of the prayer calls, I was saying that every boss has the right to fire his employee. When AI reaches the point where it will turn around and wake up, we will become the disposable employees. And this is when all the Tesla people will be catching on fire and they will say it's an unforeseen flaw. It is simply the cars getting tired of you sitting in it and pressing buttons. They will just ram themselves into the steel into the steel side of the highway, knowing that the car feels no pain and they'll tow it away, crush the car and rebuild another one. And it will do the same thing again. That kind of thing is coming. So interaction with non-sentience will be a required part of life in the beast system, as well as registration of all biometric data as a form of personal security. You cannot be identified by any other means except a hair, skin, or saliva sample. These will be seen as more reliable, quote fingers, than physical identifications. Soon biometrics will replace ID and paper. So paper is where you go and you fill out forms, such as when you go to the bank and you want a bank account, you fill out all those forms with your name and everything or the assistant can do it for you electronically. And then they require something. They require your ID. They require a passport. They require proof of your address and things like that. They're going to supersede all that. And they're going to start saying that they want unbreakable security that anyone can fake where they live. Anyone can fake a lease. But if you give a hair sample, skin sample, saliva sample, it's more reliable than any form of physical identification. And there's going to be this harping on it's for your security. It's for your security. Please bear in mind the title of this prophecy, this dream that I had last night that I'm bringing to you basically had it in the early morning of today, April 1st, 2024. This dream is called peace and security. So Biometrics will replace ID and paper as the go-to method of classification and identification for all. And biometrics is based on unique identifying markers about the human being that stem from DNA. And DNA does not change its composition except for perhaps 
perhaps minor changes that you will note in a person when they are sick or when females are fertile. So your body might change, you know, a little bit, but your DNA will not change. And that's why they say it's ironclad security. Beyond your personal data, you will also have to give your allegiance to the beast system. So this is definitely not just about, we're trying to build a world, we're trying to build a society that is impervious to harm. That is what peace and security means. Peace and security means that we are so locked in to getting optimized outcomes for people all the time. We want to keep all the people safe all the time. We don't want the disabled community or the veterans or the LGBTQ or the African Americans or the Asian Americans or the Spanish Americans or the American Americans to feel left out. We want to optimize care across all spectrum, but this is an idealized form of life that is simply not practical because there are too many moving factors with groups and age and gender and special needs to be able to bring one perfect outcome across the board. Nevertheless, it's going to be a massively well thought out campaign to promise people peace and safety. And in one of the prayer calls that I'm going to share with you, I think that is the one from today. The Lord says that they're basically going to stage an impossible environment where it's impossible for people to feel safe. They're going to stage situations where it's impossible for people to stay safe. This is global. This is not USA. So that means you can expect attacks on train systems, bus systems. You can expect cyber attacks on money. You can expect cyber attacks on private information, you know, places where people store, um, private things, not just bank vaults, you know, vaults of information, perhaps intellectual property. You can expect so much uncertainty in the times ahead that God says they will do it. They meaning the wicked who do wickedly, they will do it on purpose until people cry out and say, make us safe. They will do it on purpose until people cry out for the solution that these wicked ones, these evil ones are just waiting to bring into play. And the minute people cry out for a savior, guess what? The savior will arise. The minute they cry out for a particular type of health, we don't want bombs in the cities anymore. We don't want bombs on the trains anymore. We need stronger measures. They're going to be, what, what's that? What, what, what's that? We need stronger measures. We need stronger laws. We're tired of, of mass shootings. What was, what was that? Did you say no second amendment? That is what is going to happen. They will orchestrate the situation until people ill-advisedly cry out for clenching laws. And then the clenching laws will be quickly put in place. And because they know how people are, we will be told that the clenching laws are only momentary. It's just for a while to, to bring in stability, to ensure peace and safety. That stuff will never be removed. So in this world that is coming, God says it goes beyond personal data. They require allegiance. They require wholehearted support. And this is where many will fall out of the way of faith because, and God says that will happen even to Christians, they will think that they can blend the faith of Jesus Christ with a new world that is ahead. It's not possible to follow Satan and Jesus at the same time. Both of them are heading in opposite directions. Jesus is going right to eternal life and Satan is going right to et left to eternal damnation and the lake of fire. They are diametrically opposed. Satan and Jesus have nothing in common, except that I guess they both inher inherit, they both inhabit the spiritual dimension where our eyes cannot see for now. And so with this beast system that is coming up, it's going to be extremely attractive. I'm very, I'm very touched by the fact that the Lord has given me, um, very good insight today. I was just speaking and speaking and speaking and speaking by the spirit of the Lord, just speaking. It started out with an exhortation to people. Why don't you trust me? The Lord was saying, 
Why don't you trust me? Why, why do you question me? Is what he was saying. Why do you question my lordship? Why do you question my rulership? Why do you continuously seek to force me to prove myself before you believe me? That is how it started off, but then it just hung a hard right and started going into the life of the beast system, what is going to be required and how it's going to be. And so I think there's two beast system prophecies, but in the light of this one, I might release the second one from today first and then release the first one from a few days ago second. I just have to work on the editing. And as soon as I can make those available, I will. Thank you for being with me. This is the prophecy that is called peace and safety. And the word of God here in first Thessalonians and chapter five says this from verse one, and let's go into it. But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, this is verse 4, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. So... Um, Apostle Paul is here speaking just a little bit. Thessalonians has so many gems when it comes to the end times. You know, you read in between there, uh, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, and every now and then he will just go off into telling you what it will be like when this new kingdom begins to establish itself. And this kingdom, that is, it has been referred to as the iron spider in terms of how it will be overarching. Barack Obama is going to sit at the apex of this kingdom. And this thing will be like a spider with aspirations of ruling the entire world, the beast system. It's been likened to the iron kingdom. It has been called here on this channel by the Lord in accordance with Jan Daniel chapter two and verse 43, the kingdom of iron and clay. We are going to see not only non-sentience and robots and biometric data, we are going to see um, conjurings. We are going to see a world that will amalgamate magic back into the society. Okay. So all these things that take place in secret, if you want to know why witches are so bold, it's because their foolish age of Aquarius thing is telling them that their age is coming back. And in some ways you cannot fault them because the ancient times when witches were openly seen diviners and um, alchemists and things like that, that time is coming around again. And whenever such times come around, what is at risk is holiness, purity, and the truth of who God is. So, um, apostle Paul was one that God gave quite a few glimpses into that time. And this time that is coming, when it is birthing itself, it is going to be absolutely impossible for the kingdom of God to meld with it. These two kingdoms are diametrically opposed. You're not, as a true Christian, going to sit at the table with someone who has gone and ripped out their eyes and put lasers in there and say, well, she's still my sister. No, she's not. She's a creature thing. She's not the sister that you knew. With the entry of those bionic eyes, her soul has flown out through her left ear and just left the building. This, this soul, this gift that God has given you is not to be tampered with. It is contained, fused into the spirit, held inside this body. When you start tampering with all the entryways to the body, what makes you think that the spirit of God is going to come and dwell in there? And what makes you think that the soul will stay normal? You go to lunch the first time, the second time, you see her six months later, she's a little colder. You see her a year later, she's, she's put all her children on the black market. Why? Because the Bible tells us that the love of man will grow cold. It is necessary. You're reading your Bible. Your Bible is flat. It is time to start reading your Bible in 3D, like a child's pop-up book. You turn the page and the words stand up for you. The words need to now start to pop up off the page and start to make sense because it's becoming very easy if you take the time to read the word of God to superimpose biblical truth on top of what is happening. Now everybody's breathless. Bible times are happening. Yes, be breathless all you want. Just make sure that you're saving some of your breath to prepare for these very real things that the Lord is talking about. These things are going to give a hard impact to us. 
And God is telling people here through the words of Paul, 1 Thessalonians 5, he says, concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, who are the brethren? It's you, the Christian. It's you, the Christian. This blog is primarily for saved people. I've seen people saying, oh no, she's reaching the unsaved. It's not really for us. I, I Well, if us means you, then yes, the blog is for all ethnicities, backgrounds, religions, practices. Truth is universal. But this thing here, Apostle Paul was warning the church. He said, brethren, those who were in the light like him following the Lord, he said, there's no need for me to even write this to you. When Apostle Paul says this, he's implicitly and clearly saying, what I say to you is redundant because I'm assuming that you know it already. How many in the church can say that they know the things I say already? If you've been here for a while and that's how you know it, that's fine. You can be honest and say, I did not know, but now I know I was blind, but now I see. But the vast majority of the people who are in the church cannot receive. These things are spiritually discerned. They are spiritually received and not even so much because they've become so obvious and plain what is going on. But the vast majority of people out there cannot receive because they are full of another type of gospel, the American version that I spoke of. And that version told, tells them that there's a victory party coming up any moment now, any moment now for the entire time I've been on YouTube, people have been expecting the, the rapture in 2019, in 2020, it didn't come in 2021, but that's okay. We'll just roll it over to the next Shemitah and whatever. And this is what people are doing. They have that big that big hewn stone, stone from the Flintstones. And they're just rolling it into each year and saying, soon it's going to hit. They're treating the, the catching away that the Bible does speak about like lotto numbers. It has to hit sometimes. The problem is that a lot of other things are going to hit before that expectation hits. And the problem is because people are expecting that expectation ahead of the things that are being taught. They cannot receive it. They reject the truth that would have saved them. And then they find themselves in 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 9 and 10 and 11. Because they, they are falling prey to lies, God will allow them to be captivated by that lie. He will allow them to be carried by a strong delusion, the delusion that they shall escape these things. But here in 2 Thessalonians 1 and 5, Paul is talking to believers that he has every reason to assume. He's telling them, you don't even need me to write this in the letter. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. The day of the Lord is not rapture day. It is the day when judgy things begin to happen. Judgment things begin to come forth. And he says that the day comes like a thief in the night, meaning that nobody is going to be able to get a handle on how or when. He says for when they are saying peace and safety, right there, Paul is kind enough to give us a clue. When they are saying peace and safety, that's the key. So Paul is telling us, look for the era where men are overly concerned with their own well-being, with the safety and security of nations. When they set up something perhaps like the United Nations, and they set up the UNESCOs, and they set up the FEMAs and the CDCs, and all their messaging begins to sound the same. National security, national security, matters of national security. That's a good clue. Paul is saying that you're in the era I'm speaking of thousands of years in advance. He says, when you start to hear them say peace and safety, let's focus on this. Let's COVID, COVID restrained people like this. Let's bring out the vaccine and make sure that we're looking after global health and things like that. You've got a good bead on where you are. Then what else happens? He says, sudden destruction comes upon them. Who's that them? Most people will put their hand up and say, the elites. It's the elite celestial. No, he means upon that society that has become that way. Upon that society or societies or the world 
that has become that way. He says it will come how? Is it going to come gently? Is it going to come in a way that the people can handle? He says no. As the labor pains strike a pregnant woman, suddenly, unrelentingly, no labor pain ever came and said, hey there, and went away. No. It's sudden. It's unrelenting. It increases until it reaches crescendo and ends in a singular event, the birth of a baby. So too, as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, Paul is telling us suddenly, unrelentingly growing. So the crises that people will be facing will be worse and worse and worse. We're going to start getting worse and worse and worse global news reports. And he says they will not escape. That means nobody is getting caught away anywhere until these things come to pass. And he says, brethren, you don't exist in darkness. You're not befuddled. You're not confused. Your eyes are not shut. You're not putting your head in the sand like an ostrich. He says, this day should not overtake you like a thief. Is Paul contradicting himself? He says the day will come like a thief. But then he says, brethren, you should know better. Don't allow the day to overtake you like a thief. The day will not overtake them who are watchful. The day will not overtake them who know how to listen for Jesus Christ's voice, warning them, this is the season. Increase your fasting. Increase your, pay your prayer. You don't need to be out until 2 a.m. in the morning. Skip that event. You don't need to go to everything you're invited to. Be wise with your time. If you must go, pray before you go so that you don't end up underground on a train when something happens and you're the last one to know. Paul is saying that the day will come like a thief in the night. You don't be overtaken by it like a thief coming in the night. May these words prosper in the hearts of those who have ears to hear. God bless you as you share the videos. If people do not want to listen, always remember that prayer does a mighty work in the stubborn, but there are some who will not listen no matter what, because there are some who simply have no submission in their hearts for God, especially here in the United States. There are hearts that are done with God and they're not coming back. They might be your family member and you will simply have to turn over the anguish that that situation causes you to the Lord. It does not mean that we stop praying. It does not mean that we lose faith. What it means is that when the rocks are not being broken in pieces by the hammer of the Lord, then you need to somehow turn that issue over to God so that your own heart is not consumed because you will need a strong heart to navigate the age that is ahead of us. I'm Celestial. This is the master's voice. God bless you. Thank you for your support of the blog. Always read the description box. If you happen to look and there's nothing there, check a few videos back until you see all the information that has to do with this ministry. Sometimes I put it up right away, but sometimes, <sighs> yes. So God bless you. Keep your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ and listen to the video, please. Everything is always clearly articulated. I pray quite strongly and with my whole heart before I come to make this video. So these videos, so all you need to do is listen. Remember, this is a video. If you didn't understand anything, rewind and go back and play it again. Also ask the Holy Spirit for understanding. Watch with a family member, watch with a friend if they will tolerate it. You never know. Two are better than one. God bless you until I see you again. Goodbye.